Okay, I'm not going to give a full-on tutorial on how to do this. There's lots of videos online you can look at. I'll just give an overview of what you're going to need. First and foremost, you're going to need your garden sprayer. Now, you could use one that you probably already have, but you want to make sure there's nothing in it, no contaminants that you could be injecting into your brake system. So it's just better off buy a brand new one. This is $10 at Home Depot. And now all of these parts are from Harbor Freight with the exception of the sprayer. Now you could buy one from Harbor Freight, but I'm not sure if it has this pressure release valve. And I believe that is actually useful and somewhat important because if your system's pressurized and you want to release the cap, you have the potential for fluid coming back at you. So with this, we can release the pressure gently before we remove the cap off of the reservoir. I think that's a better safety factor. And this is about $10, and actually the one at Harbor Freight is more money than this, so this is still a good deal. And then I went to, once again, Harbor Freight, and I went with the Merlin brand. You know, they seem to be a little bit higher quality. And there is a cheaper price one. This one, I believe, was $6. There's maybe one for 4 or 5 but you only need 15, I think 10 to 15 PSI. And on the other one, it had a 300 PSI gauge and you could barely even see where the 10 or whatever was. So I got this one so that it was for readability, being able to read it better. So you're gonna need a gauge first and foremost. You're gonna need yourself some kind of quarter inch barb and that's to connect the end of the wand to a cap. And this kit, which is nice, is it also comes with a two-way barb so if you wanted to extend this hose, because this is a very short hose, and if you don't want this canister to be in your engine bay while you're doing this, you want to sit on the ground, then this barb right here will allow you to add an additional quarter inch hose. This was something extra I got, which I'm probably not going to use, but just in case. Um, but it has a fitting in there that has the one quarter inch uh, pipe threading, so that if I wanted to, because this barb right here is going to attach to the cap, and rather than just screw it in, I'd be able to put that nut on this end and tighten it that way. And then, of course, you're going to need a cap. Now, since I replaced the master cylinder, I have the old cap. Now, most people go and buy a brand new one, so you have nice new cap and a new gasket. And we'll just have to see if this gasket is able to hold the pressure. It may not. I may need to go and get, at the very least, another gasket. But apparently, these are pretty readily available at any auto parts store. You just, In my case, I need a GM cap and you want to make sure you get the gasket because I don't think the gaskets come with the caps all the time. So let me go ahead and put this together and I'll come back and if there's any tips I find along the way, I'll make sure to share them with you in this video. Okay, I'm back and the contraption is put together. Everything seems to be working just fine. I was getting a little bit of a leak out of the cap. So I went ahead and went back to the auto parts store, bought a brand new cap, brand new gasket. The leaking seemed like it was from the, the gasket itself because I would just lightly push down the cap and the leaking was gone. I thought maybe it was my fitting here up above because it doesn't seem to, my old cap doesn't seem to like the addition of threading something into it. I think the plastic from all these years is just a little thinner and flimsier. So I do have a brand new cap if need be, but I haven't opened it yet. So we'll just go ahead and go move forward. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna pull the wheels off to do this, I might just crawl underneath. I'm getting kind of tired of taking the wheels on and off. However, I would like to show you this process. So we'll see what I decide. At the very least, maybe I'll get one of the wheels off and set up the camera so you can see it. So let's see if this works. Hi everybody, okay, we're back for the final update. I'm not sure how many parts this video is. I think it was gonna end up being three parts, but I may end up condensing this down, so I'm not sure where we're at, but here's the final update you will see. Okay, I last left you. 
I built one of those pressurized power bleed systems. It works beautifully. Still had no brakes. Still could figure it out. Did a little bit more research. Well, some of you may have even noticed it or probably figured it out if you're more experienced. I put the calipers on the wrong side, which put the bleeder valve on the bottom, and that's supposed to be on the top. Now on the rears, it's a little more difficult to determine. Um, I'll try to throw a picture of, or crawl underneath and show you real quick, how the rear is not real obvious on my truck, because the bleeder valve's practically in the center of the caliper, but if you look, there's like an upper and a lower part it could be. It was in the lower part, of course, so I had to reverse to the other side. Okay, well that seemed pretty great. I did the front, no problem. Well, when I get to the rear, I had leakage out of the passenger side. And what happened was, is was the crush washer on the banjo bolt could not crush anymore. I could not get it tight enough to stop a leak. So I had to do something that I should have done from the very beginning is when I bought the hoses for the front, I should have bought the hoses for the back and we would be having this discussion. So I had to buy hoses for the rear and I wanted to make sure I got AC Delco GM actual, uh, you know, official OEM hoses. I didn't want to mess around with those. And it took a little longer to get those. So I got them, I put it in, and everything is working fine now. Um, I had to tighten them pretty good. I was having a little issues with actually the brake line trying to leak a little bit on me. But I think that's resolved now. I've taken the truck out. I did the whole brake process, braking in process. Um, I think it took, it's been so long since I drove the truck that I don't, you know, the brakes have never been, I guess, perfect in the truck. And I just accepted them for the way they were. I feel like they could be a little bit better, but I have a feeling that maybe the break-in process, maybe I didn't do it correctly or just needs a little more time. Um, so now the next step is I've got to do all that paperwork stuff of registration, getting it off of non off all that stuff. So I won't bore you with any of that. So then, as if matters couldn't get any worse, I was backing the truck up and I have a concrete wall separating me and the neighbor. Well, I hit the darn wall, pushed my bumper in, I actually pushed the fender in a little bit in the back corner and where the tailgate really won't open, doesn't function at the moment. So that had a whole new uh, project that I wasn't ready to do yet. So you'll have to stay tuned for that. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet um, with that. So anyhow, uh, thank you for watching. And so this problem is solved and first project done and then I'm going to have a series of videos with each of the other issues which the truck needs pretty much everything. So far the only thing it doesn't need is a new engine. <laughs> so we'll hope that the engine hangs on for the time that I get all the other projects done and you know then we'll have a pretty awesome truck to drive. So thank you for watching and until next time you take care.